pleasure to introduce Boris Hamilton, who is here to introduce Tyler Troutman. Uh, Forrest is a three-time Amazon best-selling author, an award-winning speaker, a serial entrepreneur. He recently received the Thought Leader of the Year Award from the National Academy of Best-Selling Authors. He is also one of America's premier experts and has been featured on USA Today, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, and Market Watch Online, among others. Forrest was seen on ABC's Shark Tank and now writes for a monthly column for Jason Hansen's Spy Plus Survival newsletter with over 150,000 members. So, welcome, Forrest. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm here. I was introduced, like they said, to introduce Tyler. Um, here's why I'm here. Uh, I'm going to go through his bio in a minute, and it's really impressive. But he asked me, he said, hey, he sent me this message on you know, Facebook Messenger. Hey, I know people normally introduce you, but would you possibly introduce me at the Rotary Club? And I said, well, let me see. My schedule's kind of busy. I got another to speak an engagement. I said, reach back out to me. You know, I said, Just send me a message tomorrow, and I'll find out. The next day, I got that message. I didn't respond to it on purpose. I know I sound like a jerk, but listen to why. The next day, I get a message. The next day, I get a message. Finally, I said, okay, you passed the persistence test. I'm your guy. <laughs> and, and here's why. We need people in this world, in this community, who are willing to put themselves out there. We don't just need people with, a nice, with nice accolades. We don't just need people that have a, a great list on their resume. We need somebody with some passion, and that's what he asked. He said, will you please give them, don't just introduce me, give them a takeaway. So here's my takeaway, and this is why I'm here. There's the four Ps that, that Tyler really possesses. There's passion. He has true passion. But where does that passion come from? It comes from purpose. Folks, I am terrified of speaking in public. And yet, I've spoken at the NRA National Prayer Breakfast five years in a row in front of thousands of people. I've spoken on stages all over the world in just the last six or seven years. And here's why. When I used to speak to one person, I would turn bright red. I would shake. My hands would sweat. Because I was worried and I was focused on me. As soon as I changed that and I focused on the people, on helping somebody else, everything changed. I still get nervous. But now I focus on my purpose, and I know that's what Tyler does. I can feel that from him. So what he does is he taps into his purpose. That's the first P, which creates the passion, which is the second P, which creates preparation, which is the third P, and the final one, anybody guess? Throw one out. Persistence. And that's what he had. And folks, we really need that in today's day and age. So many people are offended so easily in today's world. So many people are so worried about what other people think that we're entering a stage where if we're not careful, we're going to end up with everybody so worried about not hurting someone else's feelings that they don't go do what they really believe is right. So I'm going to go ahead and go over his uh, resume, which is very impressive too. But just know you're not here based on all this stuff. You're here because of the man he is, and I think you'll see that in the message. Uh, Tyler's a native Texan. He's a graduate of Stephen F. Austin State University with a Bachelor of Science. Tyler is a solutions advisor at Function 4 Star Graphics. He's a recipient of the 2016 40 Under 40 Award from the Southeast Texas Young Pref Professionals Organization. He serves on a number of boards and, a com and committees, including the Board of Directors for the Lumberton Chamber of Commerce, the State Delegate of the Hardin County Republican Party, the Long Range Planning Division of the Beaumont Chamber of Commerce, Citizen Advisory Committee for Lumberton ISD, Steering Committee for the Southeast Texas Young Professionals Organization, member of the Astronomical Society of Southeast Texas, and an active podcaster amount podcaster uh, on the Southeast Texas podcast community. Tyler lives in Lumberton with his daughter Ava, 12 years old, and his son Brody, 10 years old. And I'll close with this before I introduce him. People say that dogs and bees can sense fear. I don't know if you know that, That's, but they don't just attack. A bee won't just attack you just because you're doing something. It can sense that something's wrong. It'll give its life if something's wrong. Dogs will bite you, right? Well, I, to me, character isn't just what you do. It's what you do when people aren't looking. And may, he did may not even know this, but he used to be my middle child, my nine-year-old's gymnastics coach many, many years ago. And when I saw him one day, he didn't know I was looking, and she was crying about going in there, and I watched him walk her through it. He took time, he took care, he didn't get frustrated, he didn't get worried, and that type of, of desire to help others, that type of character, is why I want to help introduce Tyler Trout.
Well, thank you everyone for coming and thank you Forrest for that kind introduction. Uh, like he said, he's usually the one that's being introduced and so I'm happy to be on the other side of that presentation today. Uh, it's totally fine if you were running late today or if you have to leave early because uh, time is just a social construct. It doesn't really exist. Only the tools of measurement, the clocks exist. So uh, if you're ever running late to work, you can use that excuse to your boss and I guarantee you that they will be so confused they will forget to reprimand you. So what I want to share with you today is how science, earth, and the universe affect you in the way you conduct business and how you can use these concepts to make the most of your life and the lives of those around you. So I was born a little bit too late to explore the wild frontier and uh, a little bit early to explore the universe. But ever since I was a young child, I've always been really interested in science, but I didn't really have a strong enough grade in math to kind of turn that into a career. You know, I really liked gadgets and I could work a graphing calculator pretty good, but I remember all my teachers in the 1990s, they used to tell me, you're not going to have a calculator on you at all times when you grow up in the real world. Well, we sure showed them, didn't we? <laughs> all of you in this room are now cyborgs because of this, part human and part machine, because most of us have this on us at all times. We even use it for alarm clocks. So it's the first object that we interact with when we're about to go to sleep and the first thing we interact with when we wake up. Some of us even wear it in the form of a smartwatch. I did an experiment on a group of people where I asked them a question and I knew that nobody would know the answer to this. And I said, what if I gave you 60 seconds and you could use any means necessary to find the answer to that question? Could you do it? Well, everybody immediately got their phones out search Google, and in about 10 seconds, boom, had the answer. And that's the beginning of the next step in human evolution. Before, we would have to physically walk to the library, get a membership card, find an encyclopedia, search for a book, then you'd have to read the book. That takes time. And even though now that we have this, we're still a little bit limited in the size of the pipe, if you will, of how fast the information can get to us and how much information can come through that pipe. What if there was a more direct connection? Could that be the future if it's inside your body? Now you may be thinking, there's no way that'll ever happen or not in my lifetime. Well, let me present to you Exhibit A. This was my first cell phone. So you would, no text, no internet, phone calls were about $15 a minute. Uh, you, you would raise this antenna after you unzip the bag. You could call in an airstrike from the middle of the desert in Afghanistan. If the airstrike didn't show up, you could throw the battery at them. Look at this thing, it's, it's five pounds. But because this technology is so primitive and so limited in its capabilities, we make fun of it. We make jokes. Yet this was only 18 years ago. I had this my senior year of high school. And we wouldn't make fun of the iPhone X because it's the pinnacle of technology. But can you imagine what would be available to us 18 years from now that would cause us to make fun of the iPhone X? That it's so primitive that we laugh at it. And we make fun of it because we've forgotten about it. It would have to be some pretty good technology. And we're only 18 years away from that. Interesting questions. So as a science enthusiast, you find yourself questioning many things. If you've ever been in a science class, you probably found uh, a poster on the wall of the periodic table of elements. There's one over there you can take a look at. And if you were in a classroom 50 years ago and you asked your teacher, where did all these elements come from? They wouldn't have an answer. They'd say, they, they were just here. They came from the earth and they, they've always been here. They wouldn't really have a, a clear answer. But now we know the answer. They came from exploding stars. When the universe was born, there was only a couple of elements, hydrogen, helium, a little bit of lithium. Stars had to make everything else. So stars fuse hydrogen into helium, which is what our sun is doing right now, and helium into carbon. Carbon combines with helium to make oxygen and so on and so forth, and the elements get heavier and heavier and heavier, and eventually you get iron. And so the stars are literally the cosmic ovens. They're cooking the elements and then they collapse on themselves going supernova and then they explode into the biggest explosions known in nature. We'll see a picture of that. 
They scatter all these elements across the universe. That's a picture of a supernova that's over five trillion, a trillion with a T, trillion miles long. So what are we made out of? We're carbon-based life forms. We're literally made out of exploded star stuff. Every atom in your body and the atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than the atoms in your right hand. Which brings up another question. Did you know that the first planet outside of our solar system wasn't confirmed until 1992? 1992 felt like 10 years ago for me. It was a little bit longer than that, but it wasn't that long ago. So imagine all through the 70s, all through the 80s, we just thought it was us all the way to Pluto. And now we know that Pluto is not really a planet anyways. But there was a time when humans thought that Earth was the only planet. And then we discovered Venus and Mars and the rest of the planets in the solar system. But we thought we were the only solar system. And then we learned that all the other stars in the night sky also are a solar system with planets going around them. Then we thought we were the only galaxy, the Milky Way. Then we learned that there's billions of galaxies and each one of those galaxies has millions of other solar systems. And right now we believe that all that stuff is in one universe. Or so we think. We were wrong before, so is there a multiverse? Well, yes, and also no. That's a multiverse joke, if anybody got that. <laughs> so how does all this affect your life? Well, to show you, I brought a slide of everyone's horoscope. Here, here we go, right here. <laughs> You're in control. You're in control of your own destiny. When the ancient Babylonians came up with the astrological signs over 2,000 years ago, your sign was the constellation that was in line with the sun on the day you were born. However, over the course of 2,000 years, the Earth has a gravitational wobble that's caused it to be in a different alignment than for people that are born today. So many of you are com in a completely different category. You're not the sign that you think you are. Furthermore, there's a 13th constellation that was completely left out. It's called the uh, Ophiuchus, which is uh, for the serpent. So if you were born November 29th through December 17th, then you're an Ophiuchus. Uh, Ophi we got any in the room today? So what does that mean if you're an Ophiuchus? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> you're in control of your mood when you wake up every day, so make sure you pick a good one. What about the full moon? Does it make people do crazy things? Well, when the moon is a crescent, it didn't really go anywhere. It's just a shadow. The entire moon is still right there. So don't buy into a shadow causing you poor choice of behavior. You're in control of your own behavior. In fact, if you think the moon has control over you, the moon is moving away from the earth a few centimeters every year. And one day it'll move so far that it will stop affecting the ocean tides. There will be no high tides, no low tides. Because the earth oceans have a bulge. And so the earth is turning into that tidal bulge. And the moon's gravity affects that, not your bad behavior. So you're in control of your behavior every day. So make sure you pick a good one. What has fascinated me about science is how humans literally have to get off this planet in order to get along. So on the International Space Station, we've got 15 different governments involved in its effort. Countries that we've been at war with, countries that we're at war with right now, or maybe even in a proxy war, they're all up there working together, living together as a family. We even made an agreement with over a hundred countries that called the Outer Space Treaty to not fight wars in space. But we haven't figured out how to do that on the ground yet. I'm not convinced that we're even ready. There is one example that I can think of that involves peacefulness through science on the ground. And that's the, uh, the Large Hadron Collider. It's the largest particle collider in the world. It's the largest machine in the world, and it's a collaboration of over 10,000 scientists, hundreds of universities and laboratories, and over 100 countries. I don't know anything that is in a similar dynamic that has that many countries getting along. You know, politics are very divided. Religion is very divided. Ethnicity and nationality, very divided. Because humans are tribalistic by nature. If we locked everybody in this room, for one year. You know, we would start, we would get along at first, but over time, we would start to form groups and alliances and hang out with certain members of the room. And so there would never be one political party or one religion. But I just want 
to, uh, they'll, they'll never be one race or one tribe, but I want to encourage you to be just a little bit nicer to the other tribe. I've had tremendous success in my political endeavors, bridging the gap between Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives, having rational conversations that are respectful to one another, and reaching common ground. I've used this in my professional career for outside sales. Not everyone that I sell to is going to be like me. So I'm nice to everyone. I find common ground, genuinely. And that positive energy is very contagious. And you have to emit that positive energy through your everyday interactions in person and online, in your social media, in the emails that you send, and in the text messages that you send. If you don't wake up every day and you're hyped about what you're doing that day, it's time to reevaluate your situation. If you're counting down the days to the weekend and you're dreading the Monday through Friday every single week and this is repetitive for years of your life, then you're in a bad situation. I've been irrationally positive for so long, I couldn't even tell you the last time I was sick in the past 20 years. You can most certainly make yourself sick with stress and negative energy. And so in closing, I want to challenge everyone to, join, uh, to strive to join me in being irrationally positive, ruthlessly pragmatic, and just a little bit nicer to everyone else. See if you can do something encouraging for a friend, coworker, or family member. And to quote my favorite astrophysicist, you shouldn't say that just because something doesn't make sense, therefore it's not true. Because remember, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. Thank you. I love you all.